everyone welcome to Franca's Fab family and this is Christmas week and Christmas week is a very exciting time so I want to wish everyone a happy and a healthy um, Christmas season a Merry Christmas as it comes in the next couple of days and a happy new year as it comes in the next couple of weeks and we just want to really really wish you the best but Parenting doesn't stop because a holiday is coming. So this um, time we are going to look at why it's so important to pick the proper partner. The proper partner to have a baby with. How many of you out there when you had children stopped and took time to think you may have been in love, you may have really wanted children for this person, but did you really take the time to think, hmm, is this person the best person to have a child with? They might make you feel good in the body, but are some of the other conditions conducive with having a successful parenting experience and happy um, family life? Remember that I told you, if you are embarking on having a child, you have to decide that you are willing to sacrifice your time, your money, your energy, towards the development, maintenance, and sustainability for a little person for the next 18 years of your life, minimum, minimum. That's the most, that's the least you will have to do. And if you have counted that cost, and you are like, yeah, I'm ready to have a kid. You know, I could do it, I could do it, I still wanna have a child, you know? Great, I'm here for you because I'm telling you, it's one of the most rewarding jobs, however, I want you guys who don't have children to take stock, or people who want more children, to take stock of the people that you are going to partner with to embark on this journey called parenting. Why is this so important? Let's say you're a guy and you have a girl, you like her, she's nice or whatever, but she spends money faster than you can earn it. She spends all of her money and she spends all of your money. And you guys are like, yeah, let's have a child. Having a child requires so much discipline and has such a high financial obligation on your life. I mean, like, it's very expensive. I want to tell you guys, and it goes both ways. Let's say you have a guy that don't know how to spend, don't know how to save money. You know, you guys go out to a restaurant and he tipping the waiter an extra $40 on top of the regular tip. And you can't afford that. If you can afford it, by all means, live as lavish as you want. But if you can't afford that, I, I have a challenge for you. This is a challenge of today. If you really want to have children and you don't know the financial cost and your partner is really like financially loose when it comes to funding, here is a trick that you do. The next time you go to the supermarket, I want you guys to take two shopping carts. Take two. One for the normal groceries that you're gonna buy and stuff like that, but then one for uh, baby, baby shopping. I want you to just do one week of baby shopping. What does that mean? Buy the things that a baby would need immediately. Um, unless you're breastfeeding exclusively, you're gonna have to buy formula. So I hope that you do some research as to the best type of formula, and we know that there's a formula shortage going on around the world now, but in any event, a good can of formula costs anywhere between $20 and $30 a can. That can only lasts about two and a half days. So you need at least three to four cans for a week. So I'm gonna tell you, let's be um, proactive and put four cans of that formula in the car. Babies need diapers. Unless you're going to be one of those parents that's using the re recyclable diapers that you wash them every day, you hang them up or you put them in the dryer or whatever, you're going to be using disposable diapers. I need you to put a, a bag, a box of disposable diapers, newborn or one to three months in your car. Baby need clothes. Baby is going to need clothes at least minimum, minimum. I'm giving you the bare minimum, you know, like minimum wage. I'm giving you the minimum requirements for having a baby. So baby's gonna need about 14 pairs of clothes a week. That means by Sunday you will wash the clothes and the baby could wear the same thing. However, I want you to know that every two to three months the baby outgrow that clothes for the first year. Like they grow exponentially fast. So don't get used to that new clothes that you just bought. 
So if you want to buy Burberry and designer clothes, more power to you. But if you want to go to Walmart and just pick up 14 items for the baby, that's onesies. You got to have warm clothes and cold clothes because I live in Florida. Some days it's really hot. Some days it's really not. <laughs> Like today, it's cold. I know I have on white, but I'm just a, 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 a snow bunny today. But for babies, you have to buy clothes, you know, that will regulate the baby's temperature because they can't regulate their temperature, you know, for a couple months. So you need long sleeve clothes and you need um, uh, warm weather clothes as well because depending on the day, you will have to change the baby's clothes. So please, 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 one outfit is not enough for a baby a day. A baby need at least two outfits minimum. There's some people that change their babies four or five times. Sometimes the baby spit up. You can't leave the baby in that vomit clothes all day. Sometimes the baby has like a, um, a, <laughs> a diaper explosion, like I call it, and poo is everywhere. Have to change the baby's clothes. So you need a couple change of clothes for the baby. So let's throw that in the car. Then you need ointment and powder. Here is one tip for you potential parents, new or existing parents. Never, ever, 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 ever buy powder, baby powder, that has the ingredients talc in it. Talc is one of the most dangerous substances that you can actually put on a baby, especially in their reproductive part because you know, their reproductive part hasn't fully developed yet, boy or girl, and it's even worse for girls because we have a little tiny hole that stuff can go up, creating bacteria and all kind of issues down there. Talc is a, is a chemical that is not only cancer causing, ovarian cancer and uterine um, cancer causing, it has been proven, you can look it up, but it's just not good for your body. If you are going to buy powder for your baby, please buy only 100% cornstarch powder cornstarch powder that is i personally had stopped using powder once i realized that the respiratory issues and with the towel all of that but i will however if you're going to use powder at least use 100 percent cornstarch powder remember i told you that right so if you have regular johnson's baby powder in your house or some other powder go and look at it and if it see if it says talc throw it out throw it out and never ever buy it again that's just a tip for the day so now your cart is getting kind of full. You need to get ointments, you need to get a blanket, you need to get the crib sheet, you need to get a throw pillow, a burp, a, um, a throw blanket, a burping um, cloth, that's where you hold the baby, where they're gonna um, may spit up on top of you. Just, these are just a basic essential. A little rattle, a little toy, something like that. And see how much that costs. Now, be prepared because every single week, you're going to be buying at least 75% of the stuff that you have in the car, except for the crib shoot and, and the blankets again, you may not have to buy that. But the formula, the diapers, the clothes, every couple weeks, you, every week you'll have to buy those major essentials, but the clothes, every couple weeks, you'll have to buy the clothes, right? So that's one. So if you have a person that has no respect for money, they just want to shop. As soon as the money come in, they ready to get to the store and shop it out. You may want to reconsider having or a conversation with this person, or you may want to really evaluate your, your childhood, your child desiring needs with this person because when the trials of life kick in as it relates to raising children, Financially irresponsible adults will create more problems in the household between you and your partner. Another thing that we want to look at in partners before um, we embark on hopefully choosing them, because I think in the past, many of us, we didn't choose our partner. We chose our husband or wives. We chose who we were having sex with. But we did not choose, I am going to deliberately make an effort, like if I was applying to university, I was applying for a job to choose my partner. I'm here to tell you having a baby is pretty much applying for a life journey experience that will impact you for the next 18 years of your life. So picking a partner correctly, 
might serve you very, very well, right? So here is another thing that you might want to look at when you're considering a partner. How does this person treat other people's children? Do they have the tolerance for children? Do they have the same desire that you have for children? Because let's say you really, really want a child and the person is like, yeah, I don't mind, you know, sure, they will have a child for you. But are they fully committed to the experience that when the child trials of life kick in, are they ride or die with you for the development of that child? Because again, until children start becoming the number one priority for the reason for having them, I want to have a human being that I can help develop, maintain, and sustain them as they walk into adult life, training them and teaching them everything that I know and everything that they can expect in adult life. That's the real reason. So any other reason but the care of that child, you are more than likely going to have a problem, right? So the partner in which you pick. Another thing is, try to speak with your partner about parenting style. If you really want to know if your partner want to have a child for you, or they want to have a child just because it's the thing to do in a relationship, we're getting older and it's, you know, we should just have a baby together, our baby will be so cute. Like I said to you in the last video, those are not reasons. Those are not valid reasons enough to embark on this journey because it requires so much from you for the next 18 years of your life right so try to speak with your partner about their parenting style what is your religion are you an atheist and he's a christian are you a jew and he's a muslim like all of these factors need to come into play because then under what religion are you going to raise the child those things create interpersonal relationship issues if they're not sorted out or at least considered ahead of time parenting style or do is your partner one of those ones that believe in good cop bad cop which cop do you plan on being because i know i don't want to be the bad cop but some parents decide i'm only going to do the fun things with the kids i'm going to play with them i'm going to give them money i'm going to like go out with them what happened to the discipline what happened to the consistency of things that are not fun? Like, you need to go and brush your teeth. Come let me smell. Not good enough. Go brush your teeth again. You need to go and clean your body. Not good enough. Go clean yourself again. You need to eat your healthy vegetables. When you have a parent sneaking them chips and stuff in the, in the other room, how is that going to work? Are your expectations of a healthy living the same as your partner are your expectation in terms of value and education the same as your partner are your work ethics the same that you want to transfer to your kids to know that you got to be you know a top of top of employee a top of top of worker and you know so much is required is your partner the same laundry when I tell you if you think that you hate laundry now when you have children, multiply that by three consistently. Because when you have little babies, thank God my kids are a little bigger now that they can help me fold clothes and they can help me even press their clothes. The twins even, they can press their clothes. What happens when you have no help? I am telling you now, the person who is your partner now, look at all of their flaws and strengths. But look at the things about them that you don't like because I'm telling you, after a child, multiply that behavior by 10. If you have a partner that is not interested in cleaning, like cleaning the house, ah, uh, it'll get done when it's done. And you can't afford a, a maid to come in and clean the house because a clean environment is very necessary in raising the child. Children put everything in their mouth. They touch everything. They sometimes lick the floor. Like, no one tells us about these things.
So picking the right partner to have a child with is just as critical as making sure that you are ready for a child. There are some parents I know specifically, I remember this couple where the dad was always poisoning the kids against the mom. Always. Oh, you know how she just controlling, ignore her, go ahead, go ahead and do it and will sneak money under the table. And by the time, in this case, it was a, a daughter. By the time the daughter turned 16, 18 and went in through that crazy teenager time, she hated her mother. She hated her mother because the expectations that her mother put on her, like, no, you got to get good grades. No, if I'm paying for college, I'm requiring of you good grades. You got to help out around the house. And the dad was, was like, ah, you know how mommy is. You know how mommy is creating a gap and a bridge because he wanted to look like the good parent. That only destroys the child. Just like when you enter a workplace, you and your employer, you and your co-workers need to be on the same team as to what we're trying to accomplish here. That must transcend into parenting. Everybody that you have sex with, you do not need to have a baby for. And that goes for male and females. I met a guy recently, he had seven kids for I think four or five different baby mamas. Just because he went into a relationship, he, he had super sperm and every woman was getting pregnant for him. Nick Cannon can afford 12 kids. Can you make in a basic wage on your own afford four, five, six different baby mamas or mother? Every guy that you have, you get pregnant for because you won't take proper actions in terms of fertility, um, um, intervention like contraceptives or condoms and stuff like that. If you have sex and you're a healthy female and a healthy male, you more than likely are going to produce a baby if you do it at the time of ovulation. It's just basic biology. But it's time that we as adults start making better decisions with our future. A baby, you can't put it back. So many of us in my generation got the short end of the stick because parents were not prepared for us. My sister was three years old and my mother was six months pregnant with me when my father went into the military, into the Caribbean, and he never came back. I met him when I was 18 years old. So unless you're looking for a sperm donor or an egg donor, where you are going to 100% be responsible for that child. I'm grateful that I was so determined to have kids that even when my marriage fell apart, my children had a want for nothing because they are and have always been my number one. Again, do I have problems? Absolutely. Do situations rise up that I wasn't prepared for? Absolutely. But because I'm committed to be a great adult in these children's lives, I handle it. I deal with it. And that's why I'm doing this program because I think that a lot of people are not prepared for what it means to really have children. They think it's fun and games. That cute little baby grows up. That baby that don't talk back will talk back. And God forbid, if you have an unhealthy baby, the new level of demands placed on you. I would even tell people, if you can afford it, go as far as having blood tests. I remember seeing a documentary in the UK where this guy and this girl, they both had the traits of this very rare disease that the top layer of their skin never produced if you had it full blown. Their first child had a 50% chance of getting that full-blown disease. They decided, no, we're going to take the chance. Baby came out with the disease, a little girl. Hair never grew from head to toe all day long. They have to oil the baby down because the skin is raw. The flesh is raw for the whole entire life of this baby's life. These parents decided, we want to have another baby. Second child comes out the same way. Both parents at the end of that documentary had to quit their jobs because they had to take care of both girls full time. Both babies were living in constant agony because anything they touch is like being a, a surviving burn victim where your flesh is permanently raw. And both of these parents knew that they carried the genes, but their supposed love was worth all it is. 
not at the end of the documentary. I know that they still love their child, their children, but the impact in which this disability created for their life, if they had to do it all over again. While I love you, it's not in the best interest of our next 18 years and not in the best interest of our child. Or maybe you just still, you know, that's what you want to do. But all I'm saying to you is count the cost. And counting the cost of the parent or the partner in which you want to have children with is definitely underrated. And I want to tell you that is a major, major, major factor before you consider having any child or more children. Look at the person, and I mean really, really look at the person. How did this person behave when things are rough? How did this person behave when they are stressed? How did this person behave when we are going through a hard time? When you add a child to that, I'm telling you, multiply it by five or ten per child. Because that is the real reality of parenting. It's not fun and games. You're helping another human being become an adult in this environment that is so dysfunctional right now. So, I'm not trying to bog you down or anything like that, but I am just saying, really and truly, make a list of your partner. Unless you're an adult now and you just really want a sperm donor and you're going to take on that charge all on your own to take care of that child and you're going to count all of the different costs like financial, social, economic, education, you're going to do all of that on your own, and, but more than likely, people don't set out to be a single parent. Count the cost and really look at the partner that you have and decide, is this person, if this person is worth creating and being responsible with me for another life? You know, ladies, if you know that your man is short-tempered, short-tempered, he's irritable, you can like control that, you just ignore him, you go to another room when you feel like it. What happens when a child gets on the scene? And men and women, be very careful because sometimes people trap you. They think they're trapping you by giving you a baby or having a baby for you. I don't want this person to ever leave my life, so I'm going to bond myself to them for the next 18 years, really? I spoke about physical abuse on the last show. What if he's beating you up? What if he's going to beat the baby up? I know of a mom who abandoned her son because the baby came out looking just like the dad who totally like broke her heart, messed up her whole life. Baby came out looking just like the dad that she actually abandoned that dad. So then we move into life with adulthood trauma of all these different categories because we the parents, we the adults did not take time to count the cost of picking the right partner. Pick your partner. Like you go and pick a car, you go and look at the model, you go and look at the year, you go and look at how much it can cost. Like you pick a school, you go and look at the subject matters, you go and look at um, how much of the tuition is going to cost, where the school is located, is it online or is it physical? You count the cost. If you want to lose weight, you go and look at the different diets, you go and buy the food, again, financial costs, you go and see how, what you got to put in to lose those extra 10 pounds. We count the cost all the time in every other subject matters of our life, but we're not counting the cost enough as it relates to having children. Choosing your parent, choosing your partner to be a parent with you on this life journey of parenting, your obligation only goes up to 18 years. But being a parent is one of your life journeys now. Like being black, being a woman, but you know, people could change that or whatever nowadays. But biologically speaking, your DNA doesn't change. So being a parent is a lifelong experience that you are willing to embark on and at least be 100% responsible for for the next 18 years of your life. Please, my people out there, I am begging you. Because if you pick a wrong partner, the demands of life added on to demands of raising children, added on to a nightmare, baby daddy, baby mama, husband or wife, just unreasonable partner in this journey, pfft, suffering. 
guaranteed suffering. So, my people, I have to go and I want to wish you a wonderful, wonderful Monday. God bless you. Bless your children. Seasons greetings. You know, we are really coming up to the wonderful birth of our Savior, the celebration anyway. And I just want to tell you, even the Lord picked Mary. He picked Joseph. Imagine a, a modern day dad being told, well, you know your wife is already pregnant, right? But she's pregnant by God, but I need you to like stick with her still. How many people are going down with that? How many people? So even God had to take the time out to say, he searched the planet. Or he birthed her just for that purpose. He birthed Joseph just for that purpose. But he even chose the proper parents to have our Savior be born into. And he was coming to like save the world. All you trying to do is have a human experience and enjoying a baby. Please pick and choose and deliberately make an intentional effort to pick a partner that is on the same game plan as you. They want that child as much as you. They are willing to sacrifice their money, their time, their sleep, their energy, everything for the sustainability, development, and maintenance of that child like you. If that person, if you can't sit and have a serious one to two hour conversation with a person like, yo, let's really look at how we're going to be a parent together. Because so many people are having children accidentally. We're not trying to do that anymore. We see what accidental parenting is doing to the world. Have a great day, everyone. Please subscribe, like these videos, share them with somebody who you know need to hear some of this stuff, but you don't need to know how to tell them. I'll tell them. I am living proof. I personally picked the wrong partner. I got my four babies. But if I had to do it all over again, trust and believe I would count the cost of the partner a little bit more. I am telling you, my fellow potential parents or co-parenting parents right now, it's important to pick your partner to have children with wisely. And it goes beyond your needs and your desires. I don't care how that person make you feel. Are their qualities and principles in alignment with what you consider raising successful future adults beginning with children? Okay, so I am Franka Potter. Have you guys a safe day. Have a wonderful day. Stay warm. Be good to each other. And remember, parenting is a job that you will love. But if you do it with proper steps, like everything else that we do in life, guaranteed a successful life or a life of suffering. Let's pick to win. Bye-bye now.